We're trying to bleed the brakes on a T1N Sprinter. So we just plugged in the DRB3 and agreed to the terms and conditions. So we're going to go to DRB3 standalone. And then enter is the primary form of moving through the operating environment here. We're looking for 98 through 07 diagnostics. So that's the top one here. And then we're looking for 2002 through 2006 Sprinter. Bottom option right there. And then it's going to boot into the Sprinter program, so to speak. For this, you can just push yes because we're not storing any diagnostic data. And it's going to boot into the Sprinter mode. Performing self-test. I wonder how many things, this, how many times this thing was dropped. Right. <laughs> this is like the Nokia of diagnostic tools. Okay, so now that we're here, we're going to go to System Select. And then we've got all kinds of categories here, engine transmission. You want anti-lock brakes. Oh, well, you have to make sure your key is on. So now that the key is on, try it again, anti-lock brakes. And it clicked on, so we know we're communicating. For this, just push enter. Module display, once again, just push enter. And now you have all these functions, but the one we want is actually miscellaneous functions at the bottom. Push enter, and then exceptional bleeding. This is how you're gonna bleed the brakes. So the bleed sequence in the next menu should be maintained, so you should go from rear to front to rear to front, rear right, front left, rear left, front right. And there is a bleeder screw on the brake caliper. It's like pointing up, I'm sure you've seen pictures of it, and mm -hmm. then you, you attach a little hose and go to each wheel, push enter, and then start process with yes and end with no. And when you push yes, the ABS pump is gonna manually actuate under the hood, and that's how you know it's working. So this is definitely a two-person job. You need somebody inside the van operating this and pumping the brake pedal, and you need somebody underneath loosening the screws and getting ready to catch all the fluid that's gonna come out. Mm -hmm. Right, so following uh, Mike's introduction, we're gonna start the bleeding with exceptional bleeding here using this DBR3 on the Sprinter 2003. All right, I wanna start enter. Exceptional bleeding, return or running, open bleeder bob. There's nothing happening over here. If we loosen that up anymore, it's gonna fall out. I'm just now starting to get some air bubbles. The DRB3 keeps asking if we're running fluid without bubbles yet, so uh, we're not. So we keep hitting the uh, appropriate selection there, and it cycles again and makes it all run. We push some more bubbles, and I imagine sooner or later here it'll stop pushing bubbles and we'll start squirting some fluid. If you think this video is long and slow, wait until you're face down in the snow underneath your van doing this at home. This is not one of our usual how-to videos. Frankly, that's because, um, well, I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm still learning about brakes, and I thought I'd uh, invite you along to learn with me on this one rather than me figure it out and then try to share it with you.
Now at this point I should have my hose running uphill a little bit so any bubbles collect and, and uh, fluid stays there at the nipple. Some of you viewers know a lot more about bleeding brakes than I do, so please comment below, help me figure this out. Um, I've read the manual, it wasn't all that helpful. So feel free to tell me in the comments below what I've done wrong, what else I should be doing. And uh, well, this didn't work, it seemed to work for a little bit. Marco took off in the van and the brakes were great. Had been very, very soft pedal for a long time. After bleeding the brakes, everything was fine for a couple of miles, but once he got up on the highway and up to speed, he was uh, back to the soft pedal situation. Um, I'm kind of theorizing that something's getting hot and boiling a little bit of moisture in the brake lines. A little bit of moisture boiled off turns into a whole lot of air bubbles, so that would explain it. But we don't see any brake pads getting hot or dragging or anything like that, so I'm not sure where that would be happening or why. Maybe the ABS pump is bad.